My name is Louis Lively Hughes, Jr., and I am 68 years old. Um, I came to Baltimore in 1970, and I came out uh, in 1974, and uh, the GLCCB, formerly called BGA, or called McGay Alliance, started in 1975. I'm one of the co-founders of that organization and other spin-offs. Um, I'm gay, I'm male, um, I'm African American, and uh, my significant identification is senior volunteer because I'm retired. Bobby Swartz uh, and his contribution in co-founding uh, the GLCCB and, uh, and had the vision to get us in our own building rather than renting space. And uh, even in getting us in the rental space, Harvey was instrumental in, in picking sites and going through the legwork for picking uh, a suitable location. And then we had to renovate and uh, to do things to make the location work. And he found this building and found a way of financing this building from the uh, seller. Uh, and uh, I think it was a seller finance situation where we could pay off the mortgage. And uh, the building uh, evolved where uh, the first floor of it was used as a rental space for a book, independent bookstore that helped pay the mortgage off during the number of years that uh, the center was here as a tenant. And, uh, and also fundraisers paying those off. Uh, other significant people, um, including Paulette Young, uh, the first uh, president of the center, uh, were other co-founders, uh, for instance, Jim Becker, and um, he was instrumental in giving us a lot of advice with his legal background, and um, he's continued to uh, be involved with uh, the newspaper, the gay life and other things that are still running at the center, and, on, and being a member of the board and uh, other activities. Um, other wonderful people, too, to include in who are no longer with us, um, happens to be um, a, um, Norman uh, was uh, one of our first treasurers of the center, and Norman passed away. Uh, years ago, and um, we lost him due to health and diabetes, and um, we uh, have lost uh, our first person to die of AIDS was Tim Tasker, who in the 80s uh, got AIDS and died, and we didn't know people with AIDS, and it's a great loss for us, and there were a lot of talent we lost. But one of the things that Johns Hopkins Research area started was AIDS Research Project uh, starting in 1984 that all of us are participants in and I was the co-chair of the board and, uh, and a participant and uh, have watched it go all these years and it's in its 28th year going on 30. Um, a lot of information we've learned through the research study and there's still studying people in four sites around the country and all the data is here in Baltimore through Hopkins. Uh, those are outside things that, uh, in addition to the center itself, exist and uh, many of us are happy that we are participating in that because Baltimore is a great place and we have a lot of different things and it was a wonderful partnership with Hopkins and the gay community and helping support the passing of the Gay Rights Bill and Hopkins expanding their protection for gays and lesbians in their policy on campus um, and supporting us in the state level in getting the bill passed. And many of the deans uh, supported uh, our effort to get rights in the, in the overall community of Baltimore. And as a partner, uh, not only having us as participants, but uh, helping support and improve our lives. And there have been many rewards like that with those type of partnerships, not only with Hopkins, but the University of Baltimore also, which is the other teaching facility, and who has a lot of the Hopkins people in 
left there and gone to join the University of Baltimore in their effort and aids. But Hopkins was first when the other facilities didn't want to participate. Uh, but uh, AIDS became such a big issue, it changed that. In the midsection, there are many significant events that happen uh, with us, to us, uh, with youth, with uh, the gay community. Um, and uh, one of the most significant things when I think back is on my 50th birthday, in the numerous uh, state uh, hearings, they were always on the week of my birthday. This happened to be on my birthday. I took a young lesbian, 16, to testify, and only I had to testify for the youth, to Annapolis with my mother, my 50th birthday cake. And we went to the hearing. She was wonderful in testifying as a young person about growing up as a lesbian and why the bill needed to be passed. And it was very tough with tough questioning from her or actually her own representative, and she did a marvelous job. No scripting there to prepare her for. She was just naturally great. And then mother and her and I went to a restaurant in Annapolis. We had lunch, brought the cake, and I celebrated my 50th birthday. So that would have been uh, some 18 years ago uh, from yesterday, on the 16th of March. And uh, also, uh, in my working with the youth, uh, I got involved with suicide prevention. And I've been able to go to campuses and lecture and conferences uh, and learned a lot about suicide prevention. And we worked very hard to protect our youth from suicide. We did have some major losses, which devastated us. But um, we had many, many more victories of uh, people who went on to move and become stronger because they had support from the resources here at the center and the resources that were out there nationwide. Things out. But there are many different hurdles that occurred along the way. Uh, actually, one of them is the, this building. Uh, when we decided to buy it, we made uh, a bad mistake of taking the elevator out and putting stairs in. And now, uh, that's why Chase Brexton left this building, because AIDS uh, people couldn't come to the second floor, third floor, to a clinic and climb steps. They needed um, handicap access, and this building is over 100 years old, and we took out the handicap access. And I was opposed to that, but, uh, you know, it was a majority decision that the steps, uh, at that time, we didn't think about we would be old and handicapped, and, and that AIDS people would be handicapped. But, um, and that, that decision, uh, you know, came back to haunt us in a way and to cause Chase Brexton to move out and then be uh, on Reed Street and then go independent on their own. And uh, they grew, and maybe it was time for them to spin out. Uh, also.